Welcome to the Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast, where expert guests teach you how to have success in the mortgage and real estate industry. Here's your host, Phil Treadwell. All right, welcome back to the Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast. This is the five year anniversary episode. Guys, I couldn't be more humbled that we made it five years. I don't know what I expected whenever I launched the podcast, but I can't say that I would be sitting here right now five years later recording an episode talking about it, mainly because I really just wanted to interview people and I wanted to ask cool questions and and try to add value to the industry. I want to thank everyone who's listening now, anyone who's ever listened to one of our podcast episodes. We couldn't have done it without you. We couldn't have done it without our incredible guests and everyone who's worked on any of our podcasts or helped get it launched or supported me. So I want to say a special thank you. And in this episode, I want to share the story of how we got started. I want to share some highlights and some cool things that happened along the way. And at the beginning, it was really a happy accident. I didn't expect to start a podcast whenever I created the Mortgage Marketing Expert brand. The Mortgage Marketing Expert brand came from a domain name. I bought a bunch of domains in 2016 and 2017 that I thought I might be able to use. And Mortgage Marketing Expert was one of them. And in 2017, towards the end of the year, early 2018, I was a regional manager who had uh, some branches in a couple of states, and I was struggling to recruit in bigger markets outside of what I already had. Anywhere that I hadn't originated or that I had had a branch previously, either as a branch manager, an area manager, if I was marketing in those areas, I didn't, didn't have a lot of effectiveness. I wasn't able to really capture the attention of the people that I wanted to recruit. I didn't have any credibility. People didn't know who I was. People didn't know who my company was for that matter. At the time, we Googled people. When you wanted to know who someone was, you looked them up online. And I decided I need to give these people something to look at. So I decided that I was going to start getting featured in articles. I was going to start doing some content marketing and start creating some content on social media. I decided I was going to start an Instagram page, again, called Mortgage Marketing Expert because of this domain name, and we were going to do a mortgage marketing tip of the day. That was only because Instagram in early 2018 was tip of the day, quote of the day, outfit of the day. It was something, something of the day. I really knew that the audience I wanted to reach was mortgage professionals, people that I could collaborate with, that I could get to know, that I could potentially recruit. The value that I wanted to create was to help them build their business. And I felt through this medium, those little tips, we might be able to get a conversation going. After 30 days of doing this, we had over a thousand people following this page. And I was like, we're really onto something here. But after 90 days, I started running out of stuff to say. And I really felt like I didn't want to continue to try to come up with stuff that wasn't relevant or where I wasn't repeating myself. So I decided that I needed to get help. I had purchased a microphone. It was a Blue Yeti. For those that are familiar with a Blue Yeti microphone, it was one of the original ones, just the silver in color. It was a USB mic. I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I had bought it months earlier. So I made the decision, I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to interview experts within the industry, and I'm going to use their quotes. I'm going to use their tips to continue to feed this Instagram page. Now, you have to realize content repurposing and all of the things that we know about now, that wasn't really a thing. No one was talking about that. They may have been in other verticals, but they sure weren't in the mortgage and real estate industry. I got pneumonia in April and May of 2018, and I was on my back for about five or six days. It was a really, really bad bout with pneumonia. On the Sunday right before I was going to go back to work, after I had recovered, I decided that I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go ahead and write a message to some of the bigger personalities in the industry, people, most of which I didn't even know, and see if they'll come join this podcast. I sent a message to Barry Habib, Tim Brahim, Casey Cunningham with Zenix, Todd Bookspan, and Dave Savage. And those ended up being the first five guests that were on the podcast. Now, they didn't all respond at once. I knew Barry through my boss at the time. I brought Barry out to my region, to my branches, to do some events. So I had some familiarity with him and felt like that he would agree to be on. I didn't know Tim Brahim. I had met Casey Cunningham. I didn't know Todd Bookspan. I didn't know Dave Savage. 
Fortunately, all of those people have become friends and mentors and coaches to me since that time, but I didn't have any familiarity. I just went ahead and went for it. Now, a cool little side story that not a lot of people have heard is that when I reached out to these people, I name dropped the other people I was inviting. I sent a message and said, I'm starting this podcast. I really want to help people build their business, to do mortgage marketing better, to create more modern and relevant businesses. And here's the first guest that I'm wanting to bring on. And I listed the other people that I was inviting on there. I name dropped people that hadn't even agreed to be on the podcast. Well, fortunately, Barry, Tim, and Casey all agreed uh, that next Monday, that next day, to be on the podcast. And I scheduled them for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Well, here's the kicker. I had a microphone, but I didn't know how to do a podcast. Decided on Sunday I was going to do a podcast. Monday, I had some people that agreed to be on. On Tuesday, I had to figure out how in the heck to do this thing. I had actually been on a podcast, one, before. It was a Keller Williams agent named Mike Dooley. Shout out to Mike if you're still listening. Mike Dooley had a podcast called Dooley Noted, and I was one of the first 10 guests that he had. And if you go back to the episode one, the very beginning of, of our episodes, it's actually me on Mike Dooley's podcast. And then Barry, Tim, and Casey are those next three. And I called Mike and said, hey, man, you've got this podcast. I know you didn't do this by yourself. I don't know who helped you, but I need their name because I'm starting a podcast. I've got people scheduled, and I don't know what I'm doing. Well, he sent an email and copied me in to a few guys that were in the UK. Now, they said they had a marketing company, and they helped me with the podcast for a long time. So, Jay, if you guys are listening, definitely appreciate the help. But I'm pretty sure at the time they were probably working out of somebody's mom's basement or something. But they did. They helped me get the podcast launched. They told me what I needed to do. They told me how to record. I was recording through Zoom. Now, we all know what Zoom is, but picture back to 2018. Nobody had a clue what Zoom was. People knew Skype and people knew a few other things, but no one was using Zoom at that time. And the reason he wanted me to use it was because it was free. And when you recorded, the audio recording saved separately. And you could use that to edit out to become your podcast recording. That's how I got started. I ended up having those first three. And then the, later that next week, Todd Bookspan replied to my LinkedIn message Really, I think, wondering, who the heck is this guy and what is he doing? We had a neat conversation. He agreed to be on. He made a warm introduction to Dave Savage, brought Dave on the podcast, another incredible guest. Uh, Dave's been on several times. After the end of the Dave episode, he introduced me to Bill Hart. And a shout out to Coach Bill. Something else that's important to note here is that the only equipment that I had was that Blue Yeti microphone that I'd bought months earlier and a $40 Logitech webcam. I had my free version of Zoom, my microphone, a webcam, and the only other thing that I needed to get this thing going was a hosting platform. They knew the owners of Libsyn, Liberated Syndication. Uh, some of you may use that or be familiar with it. They knew the owners and said, this is what you need to use. It's the largest hosting platform out there, but it's also one of the more complicated. It's not necessarily the one that I recommend now, and it's definitely gotten better over the years, but essentially it was $15 a month at that time. That's where you upload the recording for a podcast, and it syndicates it to all the other places that you listen. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Audible, Amazon, all the different places that podcasts are listened to. The reason I wanted to mention this is my free version of Zoom, my $40 Logitech webcam, $110 Blue Yeti, and a $15 a month hosting platform is how this podcast got started. I tell you what, that first five or six episodes changed the game. And I'll tell you a couple of highlights from when I knew that we were onto something with this podcast was whenever I was interviewing Barry, Barry, you know, was in his office in the, this really nice, you know, New Jersey office, you know, really decked out to the nines. Uh, Barry has so much charisma, so much style, just really incredible answers that he gave. And the next episode was Tim Brahim. If anybody knows Tim, Tim's a very laid back guy. Tim was my coach for about a year. Tim was in a, a bandana on, was in a tank top and was sitting in a, a hammock. I had asked him about work-life balance and he was sharing a story about Native Americans in the Midwest and how when these Native Americans, the men would go on a hunt for a couple of days, when they came back from the hunt, they would camp about a hundred yards away from the rest of the tribe and they would stay there overnight. 
And he was using it as a metaphor that after we get done in the hunt during the day at work in the mortgage business and the real estate industry, we need to take some time to transition from that warrior mode, from that hunter mode into our life, into our personal life. And it was a really, really cool conversation. And we were really up in the clouds for anybody that's listened for the first hundred or so episodes. The last question I asked was if you could just give one tip to mortgage professionals today to go out to use to build their business, what would it be? And after this story, way up in the clouds, you know, talking about work-life balance, he said, do more video. He said, video is the most engaging type of content out there. You guys need to do more video. And again, that was very early. This is in, you know, May of 2018 before we launched in June. I remember thinking at the time, man, that's a, it's a great piece of advice. But then it dawned on me. We were way up in the clouds talking about Native Americans in the Midwest. And then boom, we got super tactical in the dirt with uh, video content. And so that was the moment that I realized, holy cow, we're onto something here. Because when you take the wisdom that Barry Habib gave and some of the tactical advice and stories he told, and then take it with the next day with Tim and the stories that he told and, and the incredible advice he gave, I was like, wow, this is really going to be something. That was really how we got started in the podcast, and it was an incredible opportunity. So we launched June 1st, 2018 with five episodes, and I'd already recorded with Bill Hart, and I knew that we were going to launch that the next week. After that week when we launched was Mastermind Summit in Las Vegas, and I made the decision I was going to go to Mastermind Summit, and I was going to meet the speakers, and I was going to find that next batch of episodes, of guests to be on. So every person that came off stage... I pulled aside and said, I have this podcast and I really want to have you on. Here's the guests that have been on. Here's the things that we would talk about. Can I get your contact information? Can we you know, set a time for you to come be on this podcast? Fortunately, a lot of them said yes. And the next batch of episodes were Kelly Resendez, Matt Allman, Michael Mayer, Jen Duplessis, Cindy Ertman. Guys, it was so incredible to be able to have these people on the podcast and really showcase them with the world because these were some of the greatest minds and tacticians within the mortgage industry. A few of the people that I had met at Mastermind hadn't been on yet, so I continued to follow up with them. And in the meantime, Clayton Collins, who is the CEO of Housing Wire and has become a really good friend of mine, had reached out and said that they were doing their very first Housing Wire Engage Marketing Summit and wanted us to do some live podcasting at the event. I was very excited, wasn't really sure what that meant, didn't know what a live podcast meant, but he said he had uh, other podcasts uh, within the mortgage and real estate space that were going to be there as well, and we were gonna set some times to record some things. The reason this is significant is because I brought Clayton on for an episode so we could promote the event to try to put more butts in the seats. I loved what they were doing because they were trying to take our industry and continue to move it forward in terms of marketing and technology and automation. But the keynote speaker was Ryan Serhant. And he said in the interview that I did with him on that episode was, are you going to get Ryan, our keynote speaker, to be a guest? And I'm like, yes, I am. Well, I spent weeks leading up to that event, reaching out to Ryan through social media, through email, through his website, and I got nothing. And a week before the event was supposed to happen, I was doing some live podcasting at the social survey uh, summit, the Create Wow Summit that they have in California. And I remembered thinking, Ryan's going to be the keynote speaker, so Clayton must have a contact for his team. I wonder if he can put me in contact, because I was determined to be able to get Ryan on the podcast at this Engage Marketing event in Dallas at the time. It was before I'd actually moved to Texas. I was still living in Bentonville, Arkansas. So I reached out to Clayton. I said, who do you have on Ryan's team? And he gave me an email address. So the title, the subject of the email, I put the Engage Marketing Summit for Housing Wire or something like that. And the first line of the email was, Clayton Collins, the CEO of Housing Wire, said to reach out to you. And I asked if I could do a short podcast recording with Ryan. And I knew he had his first book, Sell It Like Sirhant, that was being launched that day. It was being released. And I felt like that was an opportunity to promote. Now, the reason that it was important to have Ryan on was he was kind of an A-lister within the mortgage and real estate space. And it would continue to get us other important and influential people that we could have as guests to share with all of you. His team agreed and said that he would only have a few minutes when he got off stage. 
So we had everything ready. We had the booth ready. And as soon as Ryan got off stage, he, we pulled him aside and we did a really short podcast recording with Ryan Serhant, talked about his book. Everyone filed out of the ballroom and huddled around. And it was a really cool experience because instead of him just having you know five or 10 minutes, like he said, he stuck around and took pictures and he signed books and everybody at the event got an opportunity to meet him as well. And man, was that a really big milestone for us. We continued to bring guests on. We continued to do cool things. And I continued to set my sights on people in and out of the industry. Well, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, was a really cool get when it comes to the podcast. He was a big influence in things that I was doing personally, the things I was doing in my business. And he was the reason that I kind of jumped on social media. At the beginning, when I talked about being featured in articles and trying to do content marketing, while I was doing all this, I see this crazy guy screaming on social media about a personal brand and about utilizing underpriced attention on social media and that type of thing. And that's what gave us the idea originally to go to Instagram. He also talked about clouds and dirt, about talking micro versus the macro. Gary was the ungettable get. He was the guest that I wanted to try to get on the podcast. And so as I was trying to figure out how do we get someone like Gary V on a podcast called Mortgage Marketing Expert, this, this very niche thing, I was looking at other people within the industry. And I realized that the opportunity that we had was bringing guests on and adding value to them, putting them in front of the audience, putting them in front of people that they may not be reaching we continued to try to grow the audience, all of you, and be able to showcase the influence that they had, the tactical expertise that they had, and give them exposure for their own coaching programs, for their own books and products and things of that nature. And I realized that like any relationship, both sides need to be able to have an upside. Both sides need to be able to have something they want. All guests knew what I was getting out of it. I was getting listeners. I was getting exposure. What could I offer them? So when it came to Gary V, when I found out that he was doing his Agent 2021 event and he was adding mortgage to the lineup, I sent a cold email, just gary at vaynermedia.com. And I just sent an email in the subject line. I put more butts in seats at Agent 2021. And I put on there, I name dropped Ryan Serhant that we had had him on the podcast. I knew he knew Ryan. And I said, you've added mortgage to the lineup at Agent 2021. I'd love to have you on, promote the event, share some value with people and see if we can sell some more tickets. A couple days later, he said, I would do it and copied in his team. And man, I was excited. This is you know November, December of, of 2018. His event was gonna be January of 2019. And I was, I was excited. We had a date scheduled. I told everybody that, Hey, we're going to be having Gary V on. I set up my computer and my microphone and the camera. And I had books in the background and all these different things. And literally five minutes before the recording was supposed to start, I got an email from his team that said, Hey, I'm so sorry to do this. Gary's going to have to travel and his calendar got thrown out of whack. We're going to have to reschedule. Well, we were already just a couple of weeks before the agent 2021 event. And I knew it probably wasn't going to happen to be able to promote the event. And it wasn't, I did get to go to agent 2021, meet Gary, have dinner with a small group of people, take some pictures and, and get to know him. He did remember that he had agreed to be on the podcast and said, you know, just keep following up with us and we'll make it happen over the next several months. I was trying to figure out how in the world do we find another angle to add value to Gary, to get him on this podcast. And if you guys remember, he had a piece of content where he said that if he was an entrepreneur, he wouldn't own a home again. He wouldn't buy a home. He'd use that cash to build his business. And it kind of put the industry in an uproar. Well, his comments were taken out of context. What he was meaning was that if he was a struggling entrepreneur or an entrepreneur starting their own business, instead of using all that cash to put on a down payment for a property, he would use that cash to put into his business so that his business would continue to, to thrive. And that would in turn, you know, give him more cash than he uh, would have put for that down payment. Not that he thought real estate was a bad idea. So we reached out a couple of times and said, you know, we'd love to have you on clarify the things that you were talking about to no avail. It still didn't happen. 
I religiously followed up every two to three weeks, just replying to that email chain with Gary and his whole team, trying to get him rescheduled. And then in that summer, I believe it was June or July of 2019, he said that he was launching his Gary V04, GV04, K-Swiss tennis shoes. And he said, for anybody that buys five pairs, I want you to send the receipt. We have a special piece of content for you. I didn't know what size of K-Swiss that I wore. I'd never worn K-Swiss tennis shoes before but I ordered the high top and the low top in the two sizes that I thought it might be and a fifth pair for my wife. I sent the receipt and said, five pairs, still trying to add value, would still love to have you on. Within about 10 minutes, his team responded and said, yes, we still wanna have him on. We're for sure gonna make it happen. We will follow up. In about two weeks, I get another email from someone else and said, how is October? And instead of doing a Zoom like we were going to, we'd love to invite you to VaynerMedia to his office and record with Gary here. Needless to say, I was wildly excited about the whole thing. And that's really the moral of the story. We continued to follow up for about six months, finally got it uh, to, to happen and scheduled recording for the beginning of October of, of 2019. And uh, the rest is history. Got to go to VaynerMedia and do a really cool podcast with Gary. Uh, it's still the most downloaded episode that we've had. And uh, it's, it was just a really, really cool experience uh, from that. Now, another cool story that just happens to be our second most downloaded episode is the one where I brought back Barry Habib and Tim Brahim for the same episode. Now, going back to that Mastermind Summit the week after the podcast launched, I talked to both of them, thanked them for being on, and they just happened to be with an earshot of one another. And I can't remember which, I believe it was Barry, that said, you know what, we ought to do an episode together. Well, they hadn't created content together in like 10 years. So I was very excited to be able to do this. This was June, and the first time we were going to have a chance to put all this together and make their calendars work was October. So I have Barry and Tim in this recording at the same time. Keep in mind, we know about Zoom now. I was not familiar with Zoom back then. I had the free version. If you're just one-on-one -on -one with someone, you can do a meeting and a recording as long as you want to. If you have a third person, you only get like 30 or 35 minutes for free before it will kick you off. So in the middle of this recording, a timer pops up while Barry and Tim are just giving golden nuggets of information. This timer starts counting down. Your meeting will end in 4.59, 4.58, 4.57, and I start panicking. Fortunately, I had two screens. On the second screen, I had clicked on the button that said upgrade here, and a screen pops up where I could upgrade from the free version of Zoom to the paid version of Zoom. Well, they didn't have an option to just do it with PayPal. So you can actually see in the video recording, I'm very subtly tilting to my left to pull my wallet out of my right hip pocket. And over the next couple of minutes, while trying not to distract from the conversation and asking questions of Barry and Tim, I have to input my credit card information so that I can upgrade to $15 version of Zoom to continue this meeting going forward. Fortunately, I was able to make it happen, and the rest is history. I've gotten to do a lot of live events, both the social survey event, the housing wire events. I've done them at the Women's Technology Conference, just a lot of different places, and it's created an opportunity to meet a ton of people. And it opened up speaking engagements where I was able to be on panels and speak at all three of those events, as well as others, and one of the most important and impactful things that's come out of this podcast have been the relationships. Some of the most important personal and professional relationships I have have come directly from the podcast. Either someone that I invited to be a guest and I got to know them and became friends with them or hired them as a coach or they became a mentor or I got to go to an event or was at an event because of the podcast and met someone. That's where I met most of the people that I call friends to this day. So I want to share with you guys, it doesn't matter whether you start a podcast or you're creating content on social media, you want to do it at scale. It's worth doing. 
people will come up to you and introduce themselves and want to know more. And that's how you're going to create relationships. You hear all the time that your net work is directly tied to your net worth. Guys, business has been done, is being done, and will always be done based on relationships. And that's probably the biggest takeaway and the most important thing that I've gotten from doing this podcast over the last five years. I've had a lot of people over the years ask me, should they start a podcast or how to start a podcast? And the piece of advice that I give everyone is something that I heard Lewis Howes of the School of Greatness podcast say one time. He said, if you want to start a podcast, you need to commit to doing an episode every single week for two years. And if you can't do that, I wouldn't even start. I think that that's really, really good advice. We've been doing this five years, and I can't say that we've done an episode every single week, but we have put episodes out consistently every single month the entire time. Uh, Sometimes it's just been one or two, but there have been seasons where we've committed to every single week. At the end of the day, it's important that you stick with it. It's not a short-term thing. It's not something that you can do just for a short-term play. I did a podcast specifically for the industry because that was the audience that I was looking to reach. If you want to start a podcast, you can do one for your community. You can do one for a hobby. You can do one for borrowers and for realtors and things that's industry related as well. But you just have to remember the marketing formula that I talked about earlier is you have to first identify who is your audience. The second thing you need to decide is what value am I going to provide? What problem do I solve for people? And then the last one is what's the most effective medium What's the best place to provide that solution and that value to that audience? If that's a podcast, I highly recommend it. It's something that's been a lot of fun for me, and I wouldn't change it for anything. It could be a YouTube channel. It could be content on social media. But whatever it is, you have to commit to it. you got to stay consistent and persistent. That's what success is, consistent and persistent effort over time. Now, if you do want to get information about doing a podcast, if you go to my website, philtrudwell.com, and click on the resources tab, you're going to want to check out some podcast equipment. I break it down into necessary, like the absolute minimum that you need, uh, more recommended equipment, and then a more advanced setup. I also list all the things that I use now. I've definitely upgraded from that $100 Blue Yeti and, and $40 Logitech webcam, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Remember, all a podcast is is an audio recording that you put on that hosting platform that syndicates out everywhere. You're going to want some cover art. You're going to want kind of a unique angle and a hook that's going to drive audience and people to want to listen to your podcast. But don't overcomplicate it. You don't have to have a fancy studio or a bunch of equipment. You just have to have a desire to want to help people, a desire to have conversations, and share content of value. While you're at my philtreadwell.com website, go check out M1 Academy. One of the coolest things that's transpired over the last five years as I've gone into other leadership roles as a, as a regional VP and a national director, I also went back and started a production team. And we had a lot of success starting from scratch in 2022 while markets were coming apart and rates were going up about a half a percent a month at the time, we kind of developed a playbook. And that playbook has been from so many of the incredible guests that we've had on the podcast and so many cool coaches and mentors that I've had over these last five years. And we figured out a way to really get success and to gain ground even in this market. So check out M1 Academy. M1 Academy is the coaching platform that I've recently put together uh, at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. And we have a group coaching model called Premium Coaching and a one-on-one coaching model called Elite Coaching. And essentially what we want to do is we want to help you create the right foundation. M1 and M1 Academy stands for Mindset First. I believe mindset's the most important thing because it controls our attitude and our actions. And those are the only two things that we actually have control over. We can't control our clients. We can't control the market. We sure can't control our referral partners. But what we can control are the things that we do and how we respond to the things that happen to us. That mindset, that attitude, it's not the only thing, but it's the first thing. So mindset first, that's what M1 Academy is about. How do we create a foundation where you can discover your why, where you really understand your North Star and that BHAG, that big, hairy, audacious goal that we're all trying to reach, 
and then create a strategy to reverse engineer from that North Star back into those key performance indicators on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. And at the end of the day, identify those daily habits and non-negotiables so that you can wake up every day with certainty and be proactive on here's the steps that I need to take. Here's what's gonna move the needle in my business. And you don't have to be reactive. You don't just have to be a slave to the things that come up every day. You can know you have appointments on your calendar, you have your daily habits, you have your non-negotiables, and you're making progress every day towards your goals. A lot of our clients are already having the best months they've ever had after just a few months of applying those principles. So I wanna challenge you, check out M1 Academy, reach out to me, and let's have a conversation. It's changing people's lives and businesses, and I'd love to see if it aligns with the goals that you have as well. Guys, I want to say thank you again, not only for listening to this episode, but to all the episodes that we've had, even if this is the first one or this is one of many, thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. We couldn't have done it without all of our incredible guests and so many people that have supported this podcast and helped along the way. Special shout out to my editor and longtime producer, Joel Sharpton. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate what you do. Uh, If you're wanting to start a podcast, he's the only one that I recommend. I was recommended him right after episode 50, right after our Gary Vee episode from my good friend, Dustin Brome. I met Dustin at an event because of this podcast. I met him at the Housing Wire Engage Summit. It's just crazy how all these things come full circle. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Please share this out. If you get any value from it, please go leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. We'd really appreciate it. It continues to get the word out about what we're doing and how we can continue to move forward with our mission, which is to help people build their business, do mortgage marketing better, and help our industry move forward to a more modern and relevant era. Thanks again, guys, and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you for joining us. This is the Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast.